It's been almost a week since SpaceX blew up Starship in the sky. The company is now gradually resuming its regular operations at Starbase, Texas. In fact, Starbase workers hustled Friday afternoon on the 21st of April into the next day and had the road to the launch pad ready to open by 2 p.m. Saturday. The top job now is probably researching and repairing the launch pad. After Starship lifted off, it pummeled nearby infrastructure with flying chunks of cement and other debris. SpaceX considered digging a flame trench at Starbase, which is located next to Boca Chica Beach, but ultimately decided against it. Aspiring to have no flame diverter in Boca, but this could turn out to be a mistake, company founder and CEO Elon Musk said via Twitter back in October of 2020. This isn't to imply that Musk is now second-guessing that decision, however. Indeed, he seems to think that the company still has a way forward at Starbase that doesn't involve a flame trench. On Friday, April 21st, Musk tweeted that SpaceX started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount three months ago. The plate wasn't ready in time for the debut Starship launch, but SpaceX went ahead with it anyway, figuring that the orbital mount's underlying concrete, a special heat-resistant type called Fondag, could survive one liftoff. The company based that determination on data from Starship's first full-force static fire back in February, when the 33 first-stage Raptors were commanded to fire briefly while the vehicle remained anchored to the ground. SpaceX's various Starship teams will doubtlessly be very busy over the coming weeks. In addition to the Starbase repairs and plate installation, they'll be analyzing data from the debut flight, incorporating the lessons learned into future Starships, and getting the next vehicle in line ready for flight. Work is also underway at the OLM. After rocket workers returned some of their JLG and Genie Boom lifts to the OLM Monday on the 24th, OLM inspections and other OLM work resumed in earnest. Next up, the good news is that despite the catastrophic first orbital flight of Starship, SpaceX chopsticks are still performing well. Yesterday, SpaceX tested Megazilla's chopstick system and ship quick disconnect arm on the tower. Post-launch photos made it look like the shed containing the chopsticks drawworks, which is a motor that lifts them up and down the tower, had been hit by a mega shotgun of concrete shards. But this makes it clear that the system somehow survived and is still operable. Keep in mind that the success of the Starship program hinges on achieving a rapid orbital launch rotation with reusable rockets. The launch tower uses chopsticks to assemble the two units on the support pedestal. After liftoff and separation, the first stage performs a braking maneuver and returns to the launch tower. Two huge grappling arms catch the rocket and set it down on the launch pad. The second stage lands vertically on a nearby platform. After both stages have been recovered, they can be reassembled, checked out, repaired, and refueled for another trip within days. That's the vision anyway, although this first flight did not plan to attempt recovery maneuvers. Back to the production site, the naked Starship Ship 27 was moved to the rocket garden with its twin. It appears that Ship 27 will be more or less identical to Ship 26 with no heat shield or flaps. However, there's evidence that Ship 27 will have the first working payload bay on a Starship and could be used to deploy full-size Starlink version 2 satellites in addition to any other testing SpaceX wants to use it for. Moving away from Starship now, SpaceX is aiming to complete three successful launches this week, with Falcon Heavy leading the charge and two Falcon 9 launches coming afterward. First up for SpaceX this week, Starlink satellites are scheduled to launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base on April 25th at 6.02 a.m. PDT. This will be the 13th launch of Booster 1061. Tucked away in the fairing, 46 version 1.5 Starlink satellites will join the growing constellation. Following the very next day, Falcon Heavy is currently scheduled to launch the Boeing-built Viasat-3 communications satellite into geostationary Earth orbit from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. The one-hour launch window opens just before local sunset at 7.24 p.m. EDT. This will be the first time the Falcon Heavy is flown in its fully expendable variation. 
the two side boosters B-1052 on their eighth flight and B-1053 on their third flight, and the center core B-1068 is on their first and only flight. The smaller Arcturus communications satellite is also coming along for the ride as is a G-Space-1 Earth observing CubeSat. This will be the second Falcon Heavy mission of 2023 and the sixth overall. Falcon Heavies are essentially three Falcon 9s strapped together, with the two side boosters typically attempting vertical landings after each launch. For this mission, however, the two side boosters will not be recovered, as Falcon Heavy's payload is heavier than usual. Rounding out the week on April 28th at 5.12pm EDT, this time from Space Launch Complex 40 located at Cape Canaveral Space Force Base, SpaceX will launch O3BM Power 3 and 4 communication satellites also built by Boeing and operated by SES. It is currently unknown which booster will perform this mission, but it will be attempting a landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship. The two launches come just a week after SpaceX successfully launched Starship for the first time in a trial run that was the culmination of years of preparation and engineering. As side news, NASA recently said a delayed launch of commercial satellites on a Falcon Heavy could upend the schedule of flights to the International Space Station, including a private astronaut mission that was scheduled for early May. During an April 24th briefing about an upcoming ISS spacewalk, a NASA official said the AX-2 mission to the station by Axiom Space, which had been scheduled for as soon as May 8th, would likely be pushed back. We're trying to determine the best launch date right now for the Axiom mission, said Dina Contella, Operations Integration Manager for the ISS at NASA. We're currently just looking at what our options are. She said later in the briefing that the review is linked to delays in the Falcon Heavy launch of the Viasat 3 Americas and Astronas Arcturus satellites from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. The launch, previously scheduled for April 18th, was delayed to April 26th by SpaceX, several days after a static fire test of the rocket's three boosters. That pad is also used for Falcon 9 cargo and crew missions to the ISS, but requires some work to change over from Falcon Heavy to crewed Falcon 9 launches. She said NASA was in discussions with SpaceX and Axiom Space about a new launch date, which could be announced in the next few days. There is limited flexibility for rescheduling AX2 or AX2, I'm sorry, a 10-day mission to the ISS on a crew dragon that will carry four private astronauts including two from Saudi Arabia. A cargo mission, SpaceX CRS-28, is currently scheduled to launch on June 3rd, and Contella said that NASA would like to keep that cargo mission on schedule. We're trying to, if we can, leave SpaceX's CRS-28 on June 3rd, she said. That mission is carrying another pair of new solar arrays for the station that will be installed on two spacewalks. NASA wants to complete those spacewalks by early July when the station enters a high beta period with extended illumination of the station. It's unclear what will happen if AX-2 cannot be rescheduled for the CRS-28 cargo mission. Shortly after CRS-28 is the crew flight test mission of Boeing's CST-100 Starliner, currently scheduled for July 21st, followed in mid-August by Crew-7, a Crew Dragon mission for NASA. The agency confirmed the dates for those two later launches on April 14th in a manifest that also includes Crew-8 in February of 2024 and Starliner-1 in mid-2024. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.